entities preserve their environments from change. Welcome. Today's doodle was based on the word keeper. And for this one, we are back to the dream world seedling, which last time we saw it, it kind of discovered this kind of intricate artifact pieces that would lock onto each other in order to create the shapes that the creature using them wishes to have, wishes them to become. And so here, what we see is this sitting continuing on its path towards the left. If we take the point of view of the last doodle, he's continuing towards the left, towards this increasingly closer rocks, these rocks that were slowly, that seemed to slowly close in into some kind of tunnel. And what we see today is that actually these rocks lead to some kind of doorway, some kind of gate, some kind of place where an intriguing creature is awaiting the dream world seedling, seemingly wanting to analyze it, to stop it from entering. And if you kind of saw some of the previous doodles, you might recognize this creature. It's one of these intriguing plants that somehow are able to, that grow from these polished light rocks and are able to create some kind of body out of them. And they always end up generating and carving one of these rocks into the shape of a mask. We've seen these masks a lot of time appearing in the Abyss Garden. The first time they appeared was for the world doubt, where we had a really esoteric and intriguing scene with one of these masks and into some kind of into some kind of intriguing material that had on the other hand a few balance, a few scales with seedlings inside of them and other seedlings coming from the sun. It kind of looked like a dream, a ominous dream, an omen where these masks kind of try to understand the seedlings and see where they existed in the balance of the Abyss Garden. What was their purpose? Whether they were there to help these masked creatures or not? The second time we saw the masks were with the world stuck, where one of them was traveling along trying to bring a dying seedling to a place of safety with half of it of hidden in a dream world so that the dying seedling would stay alive long enough so that its mind would stay alive long enough for the dying seedling to seek help but in the meantime before the events that we witness now the dream world got cut off from the dying seedling it ended up in the hands of the blob ruler who used its power to do a lot of violent things and in the end, this dream world and this dream world seedling ended up being able to escape into the real world because of the help of this creature of change and balance. And so now we have this dream world seedling that in the last time we saw it was kind of searching for something, was looking for a purpose, was looking for some kind of origin. It was looking to find out where it came from. Because as it went away from the dream world, it seems like all of its memories got wiped out. As it entered this world of the Abyss Garden, it seems like, it seems as if it just got born again. And as it 
was looking for its origin, all it saw was emptiness. It feels, it seems like, this seedling feels utterly lost in the abyss garden. But now that it found company within these intriguing pieces of artifact that follow it, it decided to go further and to continue on, despite the lack of information, despite the lack of guidance. And we now see it with one of these masked creatures. And it's actually quite interesting, because there are a few ways to see it. We could imagine that these masked creatures are able to communicate with each other, that they might be part as we wondered previously that they might be part of the same network of plants and that in the end all these masks are the same creature that is just appearing in different places of the abyss garden and so if it's the case this mask would be able to recognize the dream world seedling because one of the other masks was the one traveling with it and so for the moment I'm quite unsure about what's going to happen, but at first glance it does seem like this mask is a bit put off by this dream world seedling trying to advance into this forbidden land. We don't know exactly what's hidden behind these masked creatures, behind these plants, but it seems determined to not let anybody enter. But on the other hand, what we see is that this dream world seedling seems really adamant to continue to go forward. We see it advancing at quite a fast pace and we do see that its will is to almost frighten this mass creature because we see the representation of its will through, through these artifact pieces. And we see that at the moment, they are kind of arranged in a threatening way. A bit like a tiny insect or a tiny animal that would make himself look way bigger than it is to frighten something that it might see as a threat. And so it's quite an interesting dilemma here. Because on one hand we have this dream world seedling that really doesn't know anything about the abyss garden and everything might seem like threatening or dangerous and so it feels like it has to show strength and to show that it needs to go forward it feels this needs to go forward he might feel like he has to kind of impose its will so that it might be able to cross but on the other hand we have this mass creature which doesn't seem really, that seem quite unfazed about the threat that might pose the dream world seedling and seems more willing to have a conversation to try to understand why this dream world seedling wants to pass by. And I'm quite curious as to what's going to happen there. If the mass creature will be able to stop the dream world seedling and to kind of communicate with it if it's gonna be able to recognize it and if the dream world ceiling would be if it would somehow feel safe enough to allow itself to chill down and communicate with this unknown being that seems on the defensive and that seems to stop him to want to stop him from going forward I'm really not sure about what's gonna happen, but I'm really curious about it. And the more I draw them, and the more I feel a real liking for these masked creatures, and I kind of want to know more about them, about these plants, and kind of what's their goal, what's their purpose in the Abyss Garden. Because we saw a few of them kind of interacting with the seedling king and the different seedlings. So it seems like they have some kind of connection with them. And it seems like they are going out of their way. They went out of their way to stop the spread of the blob ruler. And so they seem to be closer to the artifacts and 
the seedlings but we don't really know why or, or exactly what kind of goal and purpose they have what they wish the Abyss Garden to become in the future if they are more peaceful creatures or if they are some kind of diplomatic entities that try to grow by keeping the peace around them but anyway i hope you enjoy this doodle i hope you enjoy the explanation behind it i hope you're having a nice day a nice evening a nice morning and i'll see you tomorrow